Hi everybody, uh, today I'll participate in at Coder Grand Costa 29, which has actually started three minutes ago. I'm a bit late today. So I'll try to describe my ideas for solving the problems. Okay, now you should see my screen. So let's go. So from the easiest problem, there are n pieces with black and white sides in a row. Uh, we can choose a new position where there's a black then followed by a white piece and then we swap them. We ask how many times this can be performed. Obviously in the end kind of all white pieces will be the left of all black pieces. So this is really straightforward. Um, yeah, maybe even more straightforward than usually means. So just for any white piece, we compute how many white black pieces are there to the left of it. Okay. Okay, I need to remember that answer is 64 bit. If it's white. Uh, okay, if it's white then when we do this, otherwise we increment the number of black pieces we've seen. And that should be it. Okay, probably. Uh, sorry. I'm probably not going to submit because it's so easy, it will take so much time to submit them, so let's submit all of them at some time. Okay, so now we have n balls with integers around them. The integer on this ball is AI. We need to form a pairs, so that's each sum is a power of two. And maximum number of pairs. Hmm, interesting. So, what can we do here? Let's take the largest number, the largest number which can be in a pair. Then I claim that it can be only one pair, because if it can be in two pairs, then one of them is the in one of them the other number will be bigger than this number. So because it can be only one pair, we can just take this pair and repeat. Yes, so this is also pretty straightforward. Yeah, basically if you know the larger number in the pairs, then we know the power of two. So if we go from uh, start to the end. Okay, we, we should be able to do this. Okay, so we read the numbers. We solve them. Here we go from the end. Okay, so here we get in uh, if not taken up in B2 in pool equals here. Now P2 less than cool. Okay, so here, yeah, we, in order to be fast, we will just, okay, we can just have a hash map, yeah, probably hash map is easiest, should be fine, 400,000, right, 200,000, yeah, should be fine. Uh, 
Okay. So this way we count and then while counts is empty and x equals counts long yet. Oh, it should be not cash map, it should be tree map. Last key. Multi-set on C++ will be way shorter, but okay. Uh, now we compute the same thing. Okay, this we can call cool. If integer what if one counts gets neat. If what's not equal to now. Shorter and then if what equal to one counts remove it, otherwise counts put need but minus one. Okay, and then print result. Yeah, probably should be should be able to write this in one minute or something like five minutes like I did, but okay, doesn't seem to work. Uh Interesting, why does it hang? So we get last key. Then we either remove or decrement. Mm -hmm. Interesting, why does it hang? I don't understand. How can it hang? Okay. No idea. That's the breakpoint. Okay, so counts we have. Oh, negative number. But how, how could it become? We never put zeros. Oh, sorry. It was very stupid. Okay, now it works. Okay, let's see what's there on the scoreboard so far. Okay. Not on this page, okay. First two, yeah, I'll do the first two as well, but yeah, anyway, let's read the next one. So there are strings and the string to the left is lexicographically smaller, but you know the strings, only their length and need the smallest size of the alphabet for this to be possible. Interesting. So Okay, so if a string, okay, let me write on paper. So if a string, next thing is longer than the current one, then we can just add a's to it. So yeah, if the next thing is say more shorter, then first of all, if it's shorter, then we just truncate what we had before. Doesn't really matter, and then. We must increment one of the uh, positions before and put A's afterwards. So essentially, we have these counts basically for a given prefix. How many in total? Numbers we have no, but it's exactly the same, right? So, for example, let's say we have some twos and then some ones, then it could be a a a b a c and then b c, for example. And then we need to have d, but if it was a b a c a d, then so for example, four four twos and two ones still can be three letters, even though if you just six ones, some of course is also possible. Yeah. Okay, what if we binary search over the answer? And then... Yeah, then we can do everything greedily, it seems. 
we can just put the next possible smallest one and then yeah that sounds reasonable right yeah that sounds reasonable yeah that sounds reasonable so we can we can do that oh but of course needs to work fast though it's interesting okay so yeah but well, actually it doesn't seem really necessary though just yeah should be something very simple look at our own paper Because this is a trade-off, actually, yeah, so kind of, yeah, probably with binary search, it's kind of easier. Oh, but then what? And we have this current string, and then we truncate this is very fast. I need to extend and then change. So I don't know. It seems not so obvious. But for example, if you hold, remember all positions which are not A's. Right, if we have a stack of positions which are not A's, then truncating is easy, adding A's is easy, yeah, and then incrementing is easy, okay. Probably there is an easier solution, but let's implement this one. Okay, read M, read, read the array. Yeah, this is pretty intense. Uh, okay. And just new number of possible characters. Okay, so I guess we can always do with n characters. And we can never do with zero characters. So. Okay, let's try to do. With middle characters. And then we print right. Okay, so now we need to do with this amount of characters. Okay, we have positions. Most whatever four times n plus ten. Yeah, even if we have only one letter, yeah, but then always a actually. But two letters, yeah, we can do all combinations, it will never go far from the ones to change. Yeah. Okay, so here we do count equals zero, length equals zero. So now we just iterate over length. Okay, if core is more than length, then we just extend by ace. If nothing else changes, then equals core. Otherwise, if core is less than length, then we need to truncate. So while count more than zero and pause count minus one. More than equal to car. Oh, uh, yeah, minus minus count. And then equal to car. Okay, now we truncated. So now we need to increment this. So. Mm -hmm. 
change so increment so first of all if middle equal to one then we cannot really increment right so if we ever get a shorter string here then we return false okay let's call it alphabet okay otherwise uh i always have second letter so here we say if pause okay, here we guess we for int at equals len minus one at more than zero mm -hmm. so where we will increment right so Okay, if pause count equal to zero or pause count minus one less than it, so in this case we have an A here, then we just put a B in this position, right? So we say pause count equals and uh, pause uh, word count equals one. count and continue outer and outer will be this uh, okay otherwise here we have the counts position so if what count plus one kind of alpha less than alphabet then plus plus what count minus one continue out there otherwise this is last letter so we have to remove it so minus minus count okay and finally if we reach here as we couldn't do anything then return false and here we return to okay that should be good enough yeah we just greedily put everything okay seems to work on samples okay let's submit when we have some delay we can maybe let's submit three now okay i'm a bit curious to see what's going on so shall i eat is the right solution right? okay B. B. java 8 8 A. is accepted yeah the rest probably also accepted okay so what do we have here okay some people solve d after a so probably it's not so obvious okay let's solve it still so we have a grid h rows w columns and n cells which are obstacles and there's a piece in the corner so first player can move the piece to the right and second up or not move the first one wants to have as many turns possible in the game and second player wants to have as few as possible moves to the game so it means that the first player does not move Second player also does not move. And yeah, so basically, essentially, the game ends when the first player doesn't have a move. First player wants to have as many moves, and second player, okay, hopefully, everything is accepted. All right. Okay, so first game ends when the first player doesn't have a move. 
and this is, doesn't have thingy is counted. Okay. The first player always moves to the right. So second player can decide basically which row first to second to continue. Then first player moves further to the right again. Second player decides which row to continue. So it looks like a very simple DP, right? If we know that in first player in this state game ends with this many moves. It seems actually very straightforward. Oh, the field is big. Okay, so what happens when there are no obstacles? Uh, probably something simple, right? Okay, so let's say for a column, we know the optimal answers. The number of moves without previous column. Then, for each position where there is an obstacle, it will be just obstacle. Because where there is no obst above obstacle, we'll just copy from the right. And all other positions, we take the minimum of two, essentially, those two numbers. Right. So initially, in the right column, there is column of zeros. Then sometimes you put obstacle. Mm -hmm. So it's one of ones, right? Because there is one move of the game goes here. And then obstacle can be treated as zero, right? So when we put have an obstacle here, we say that if first player moves right here, game ends. So it's a zero. Alright. To put zeros in some places. So we have first for every number we take first we put zeros in some places. Then for every number we take it maximum of this number, minimum of six number, next number. Oh, no, I not Yes, yeah, so it's a bit different. So, what's the cost for second player? They change things a bit. So, okay, so we need to have a non obstacle cell. We need to take the minimum. Okay, guess it was interesting what happens if there is a column with no obstacles at all. Then we just take where y is minimum. So is there are k columns with no obstacles. It means that yeah, we can just should have minimums of such running. Oh, but we still can do it. Still quadratic. Okay. Come on. What is going on? Go from the end. So there is an obstacle. Suppose game ends when Takahashi is to the left of this obstacle. So here or the right most one. Uh, then from any position he's here or here. In from this triangle essentially, in this triangle the game will end can end here because Aoki can always force him. Actually not. So this is an obstacle. Then um, yeah, for example, if this is also to let the result another obstacle, then I have the line and he cannot be forced to this obstacle. So I guess the game actually continues longer because there is an for example if there's a just a chain in second row then the game will continue for n turns, right? So it's not so simple. All focus on independence. So we still need to somehow uh, change somehow. Okay, so how to do it? 
for every obstacle find where it must no it's not Yeah, but what if you find kind of the obstacle that is reachable from the top left corner, basically? Essentially, like in this triangle. The obstacle in the leftmost obstacle in this triangle. And then the second player, it seems, can always force to go to this one. And not before, right? So why is it not here? So, no, no, wait, it is too simple. Uh, what do we call standings? Some incorrect attempts on this problem. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah, that's reachable. Yeah, what does it mean? Reachable, exactly so. To the cell on the left is reachable, but the cell itself is blocked, uh, it's not good, right? So, essentially, okay. so below the diagonal are not important because the game will never reach them. Alright. Well, to the right, but then, yeah, essentially, if there is a cell right on the diagonal, then it decreases the set of reachable cells. If there is a Yeah, it seems that it's basically like this. So, yeah, okay, it's actually simple still. A bit more complex, but not much. Okay, so. Okay, I got some sloped, right? So, first one here actually moves. and by y Uh, 
So what about the last two? Any submissions? No. No submissions. Okay, let's try to read. Yeah. Well, looks like last one is so hard. Yeah. Probably better to start this one. So there is an office within rooms and corridors. Okay, there's a graph. A tree actually. And I need to go from a given room to room one. And always go oh but not necessarily immediately. Go to the smallest adjacent room number he has seen the adjacent to the rooms already visited okay oh and the click out number of trials like how many rooms we reach okay it's interesting okay let's, see, let's accept yeah not super hard Yeah, but now we need to solve interesting problems. Okay, so what do we do with all the rooms? Essentially, we need to count, yeah, if we start with a given room, how many rooms will pass before we reach one. So let's kind of, so that's room one. For all rooms adjacent to room one, if we start with them, we'll have two. Yeah. No, it seems that we need to take the room with smallest number from the rest. Let's say it's five. Then for all rooms adjusting to five, new rooms basically. We will oh, not necessarily. Uh, no, let's find room two. Yeah. So for if we start with any room adjusting to two. We'll go to two first. Yeah. Basically. And we always only have, have visited rooms. So yeah, basically because we travel through visited rooms, kind of smallest number is also already basically the only new rooms we can get is from this new room we visit, right? So Just into one. If we see them, we go to two. But then, oh, we just need to increment the answer for one, I guess. Because we will pass through two. And then, oh, no, 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 sorry. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, so here we have four rooms that respond, no the answer. Now, for all rooms, basically, we take another room two. If it's not, say for it, we do not know the answer yet, then 
for all rooms adjacent to two will go to two. And then so invariant kind of okay. But then still yeah, basically two might have been adjacent to like three. So then we need to go there. Or was they not they all not adjacent? Okay, oh, yeah, some of them are actually adjacent to one. So if we go there. Oh, it's a tree. I don't use the fact that it's a tree, right? So there is a one somewhere. It splits the tree into parts. So, and we will only ever visit this part. Right? So we start with some vertex. And we go to its smallest neighbor, then smallest neighbor of the two. Yeah, so let's just do DP on the tree, right? So we have subtree. Basically, what we need to know when we edit the subtree is how many moves we do before we get to one, and what is the highest number of room we pass. Because then it means that in the subtree, we will have to visit all reachable rooms. Uh, yeah, if we start by moving up from the subtree, how many moves until we reach one? So we will never go to the subtree, and what is the highest number of the room we pass? Right. So how to solve it now? If we know this. And then we have multiple children here. Uh -huh. Basically, we'll go up only when we see. Kind of exhausted all possibilities before before this number. Yeah, actually, yeah. for each one of them, we'll go. Yeah. Okay. So recursive call. Yeah. Basically, we need to know highest number on the number on the path from one to this vertex, and. Essentially, if a child has mm -hmm. no, it's not. Okay, let's add numbers one by one. So we start with one, only add it. Now we put two somewhere. If it is connected to one. And then we can go. We will visit all. No, mm, now we are three. Then we will not necessarily. Hmm, that's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky. Okay, probably people will solve this one next. Don't look too tricky. Oh, it's actually solved the last one. Nice. Anyway, that's in principle, all of them probably solved. Okay, let's try to finish this one. Because then order doesn't matter really. We know they are solvable. So, okay, before making some sounds, let me switch the sound off. Okay. So, okay, so.
so we start by <clears throat> yeah, this DPL was promising, but still don't detail can seem to work out, right? So, you know, or do they? Because we actually know kind of highest number on the path so far to the root. It means that in this tree, all numbers which are higher will definitely be visited all numbers which are lower before we go up and all numbers which are higher might would not be visited because why right so we'll never go we'll decide to go up and yeah so i guess if we just dp and remember the highest number in the path and then Basically, if we descend to some subtree, then from all, all other subtrees, we will visit kind of the connected component that is uh, smaller than the highest number on the path up, right? So we need to find how many in this subtree are reachable. Yeah, but is it quadratic actually? No, it seems. We do it once per subtree, right? Oh no, but once per subtree and per any position, right? So because we have such queries basically given subtree and the number, how many numbers here are smaller? Okay, how many numbers at the top are smaller? But then for the sub, it's kind of a if it's larger than zero, if it's smaller, it's one plus answers for subtrees, and now this way we get quadratic uh, number oh, because oh no, but actually wait. So is it don't the query we get is always because it's a bigger we don't descend, and if it's smaller, then it is actually the biggest number there as well, right? So. Yeah, so this seems to be good. Actually, so yeah. First, for every subtree, we count how many vertices from the root, reachable from the root, are smaller than the largest vertex on the path to the root. Okay. Not a very unusual format of the input, so here I guess one thing that makes this different from you know, other um, gaming screencasts maybe that here there's never a pause, right? So there's always need to think or write, so you can never how to say it in English. I must always uh, I must always be trying to solve the problem as much fast as possible. Okay, so get the graph. Now we solve it right so here we see Okay, 
if what less than maximum small oh, sorry what is greater than maximum small than amount equals zero for Parent VDFS one max enough. Don't want your own. Mass max max enough. New max enough. Mass max max what max enough. Okay, here we go. New max enough. This don't want your own equals V dot small. Otherwise, it's one plus total below. Alright, this first comes the number that is visited in each sub tree. And now, second pass, we compute the answers. So basically the idea is if we start in this vertex, then we will visit for each child, no, child. because if we already start here, yeah, no, no, we need to get two cases if what more than max above. Then we need still for all children kind of not count in this vertex. Okay, so that's right, because we will go down unless they are not counting this vertex because this we already visited. This is the tricky part, right? So yeah. So now we need to count for all children with a different max above. Oh, well, that means second essentially max above. Right. So, okay. Still should be good enough. Right, second max as well. Okay. Smaller than second max equals uh, 
I posted my zero action here. This is the same difference, right? Okay. 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 Let's count Okay, so here let's count answer. So if it is bigger than maximum above, then From children, we need to visit all smaller than second maximum buff. Answer equals to one, this vertex plus total below first. Uh, yeah, smaller total below second, so less than second maximum. So we need second pass. Okay, let's do second pass. Extra. Now, kind of, if we go to a child, then in all other children, I need to take everything smaller than max above. We will visit extra. Now, from the vertex edge, if V not equal to parent, VDFS2 mass, mass new max above equals mass max max above what? New max above, extra plus new extra minus V smaller than above. This. Okay. Okay. So maybe there are 
сам сапнул, так схема, бандит, инженер, всем сгуд. Окей, фест, сэмпл. Okay, let's see we start with room 2. Okay, this is not the first one to second test. It was just a chain. So oh, plus one, right? Because we will use we use this vertex as well. Okay. Okay. No, all answers seem to be bigger by at least one. Okay. So Okay, why is it not correct? So on the okay, why? Oh, so the number of travels. Okay, so it is now one more. Okay, so now in the last case doesn't work. Almost, so it doesn't work for vertex three. Okay. Let's draw this piece. Hopefully, it's easy fix. Okay, one, five, five, six, six, ten, ten, three. This is a chain, and then we also have ten, eight, six, four. Eight two four seven and four nine one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay and so for three I say seven because it's five yeah I guess all right because we don't actually go down here and we have 10 we don't go to this part yes here is yeah we'll visit we go Six seems what was in marks above. The second one, right? for two to go eight go ten go three definitely go six go four go five what do I seems so show me how do we avoid it five so let's go to three and four but oh All right. Uh, what is more than max above? Right. So we need to subtract the right thing. Okay. Okay, this works. Okay. Not very hard. Yes, I 
Ну, скорборд, всем самый слабый, но очень. То есть, Кейльдар, Нелья, Слоудхарт. Майни Самсон Техникал, вот здесь от кодер, на сенс Техникал, на сенс кодер, 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 на сенс They are edges. So essentially there are clicks, and then we pick one edge from each click. And we need to build a tree. Okay. Accept. Second maximum is my favorite. Okay, so now what do we do with F? sheet of paper. So what do we do with F? Here we have okay. Here we have okay I just need to build three. Okay one edge from each click. Hmm Why is it hard? So mm, yes. obvious why is it not hard right? so we need to okay so the problem is What if yeah we have only one from each end so it should only be okay is it never okay if it's minus one yeah because minus one is gonna fall the other right because five and six appear only one so that's why it's minus one just not enough Not enough to for some subset, this has too many, not enough pages to cover it. All right. But then I think we yell it in the work, and so why would we do not work? Yeah, what would we do that one? Yeah, what would we do? <laughs> I always build three like they do in this. For every vertex, draw exactly one edge, the vertex with smaller number. Can I build three like this? Why couldn't we? Intuitive, intuitively it seems. Then we can just need to pick one such edge from each. It's basically for every. You know, because for every set where it's not the smallest. I just need to have my chain between those sets and the vertices. We pick a trail bit the edge to smaller one. I just accept smaller. Every vertex must have at least one edge to the smaller. No, not actually not necessarily. Yeah, so not good, right? Yes. Will not work because if we have a couple of sets like two, three, two, four. Yeah, basically just my sets give a three. Then this is the three I should have, so. I cannot restrict tricks in any way, they can just give me any tree. Interesting.
Не интересно. So I guess we cannot do it if there is some set of subsets such that it doesn't cover all vertices and the vertices it covers these are some vertices that appear only in this subset. Yeah, it can cover this uh, some vertices appear only in this subset. Say there are k such vertices, then there must be at most k minus one edges, uh, and there are less than k edges, k, k elements in the subset. Right. That sounds like my generator sets on the left and the vertices on the right. Essentially, we have a graph. And we need to find the match. Actually, if there is no matching, now we can handle this. But if we take all vertices. Which oh yeah, take all vertices, take all adjacent sets to them, and now if the number of such sets is smaller than other vertices, and we didn't take all vertices, that is bad. Okay, yeah, so we need to kind of. Find such obstacle. And if we don't, then let's see for every vertex which you have chosen a set. Still does not necessarily help, right? Or we always help. It actually always help, right? Because you have less than one set, so somewhere will be an obstacle. Right, yeah, we have it completely disconnected, like three, 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 and then probably two for other three, so for them there is not enough. Okay, well, there is enough. So for every set of vertices, there is a corresponding set, except the full, of course. Then Essentially, we have one more spare vertex which is connected to all sets. In, oh, no, sorry. Uh, no, not. not. This is tricky. So it must be solvable if we add a new set which contains only one of the vertices for every one of the rest. It must be the full matching must exist. So this is full matching that takes any n minus one vertices. Because if you rule the tree, then it says it was such match. Okay. And if it's true, then how do we build the solution? Because we also need the certificate. Okay, probably, yeah. But we need this contest here to slow the slow thinking. Still, how do we build a certificate? Okay, so. Uh, how do we build a certificate?
Once it passes, okay, we can check it. We can check it if we find matching. Matching, we can do some e squared of v matching, or maybe just normal matching somehow runs in time. Yeah, probably runs in time. If you just do greedy first as usual. Right. Yeah, probably runs in time. So now. We've done this match and we found it, but now how do we build? How do we build the answer? When there is no obstacle. Matching must be tensioning this. Connect this vertex to its parent. But what if parent is not actually? It's supposed to be order. Oh, but it does give an order, right? So, mm -hmm. so yes, yeah, so if we do this matching, find this matching, right? Now we start from this vertex and try. There's an improving chains for every tension from this. We can reach all vertices. If we try to improve the matching from here, what it means that we have such tree. And this tree gives us the answer. Gives us the answer, I think, right? So, yeah, this tree gives us the answer. Okay. Yeah, that's actually quite simple. Just need fast matching. But we can try first normal one. Uh, yeah, we can do the max. Somehow implemented. Mm -hmm, interesting. Yeah, I already have copy paste on this side. Okay, that's good. That's good. Awesome thing. No. Okay, so 
somewhere with storage or from source to uh h core key one Maybe build in rough. Okay. No. Give. Quark flow DFS. Uh, okay. Okay. Must be zero here, but it will mark by once. Okay. And then we print okay, print the edges.
like this. Just flow, just flow, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is easy actually. Plus time needed, maybe problem. Okay, prince minus ones. Okay, let's see. Where does it print minus one? Okay, oh, no, it is coming to be a bit to T. There are only okay. Get rid of genius for now. Maybe the problem is this. It's the problem is this. Let's move front later. Okay, no, still the same. Nice. Okay, what graph do I build? ST. Okay. From S to left, from left to some, no, the curve, sorry. Okay. Didn't damage the graphs in the way they first came out. And now, okay, two, two, three, three, four. Oh, it must be from the corresponding set, right? from the corresponding set okay so we need to remember the set right Six, three, seven, four, five, five, nine, six, ten, seven, one, eight, nine, nine, three. Seven, seven, three, three, nine, two, six. Okay, this looks good. Well, hopefully. 
これ探索ってあるわけないですね。こうして、いや、no incorrect submissions。Why does Michael has to have no incorrect submissions? Right complexity, the Java, but then it's copy paste from Max. So it should work. Okay, so to recap, this property we had that kind of each each subset of MS and vertices must have a matching. It translates to if we run normal matching, and then the last step we run、uh, the DFS from the only remaining vertex. All others must be reachable. And this reachability tree, basically, for each vertex we find the previous it reached from, it gives us the answer essentially because every two edges basically give you two vertices from the same set exactly, exactly what we need essentially. It's kind of beautiful. And just, just matching, yeah. Time limit would be interesting, would be disappointing, but hopefully it's fine. Maybe it's fine even with DFS, but yeah, this way it's also quite complexity. Okay, so here we have, yeah. Unless somebody else's solution is testing for one time to be second place, yeah, not. Almost. Other people have a lot of incorrect attempts. But not Michael. Oh, well done, Michael. What did I say? Very well done. And yep.、Yeah. Actually, only a tiny bit faster, right? So I have 88 minutes, he has 87.、Right? So, yep.、Yeah. Very well, hopefully, done. Okay, so now is the time when I can. <laughs> Speak for some time without any pressure. So, anyway,、um, oh my god, time limit. Okay, no more pressure. Really, time limit on one test. Time limit on one test. Oh my god, what do I do? Rewrite to C. Submit without dinits. I don't know. This is correct and correct complexity. Can you replace longs by ints? Okay, this time this if it doesn't pass C plus plus and that's the correct approach. I'm disappointed this time limit. On one test really. I guess I can start writing C plus plus while testing. Really disappointing. Okay. 
Mm, yes, what can I say? Hopefully it passes. Okay, so some task have already. Okay, create a new task. As you can see, I really don't want to code this. Okay. Maybe it passes, and I don't need to. How nice would it be? I hope it really was right in the end. In this delay. Okay, one test again. One test.
plus minus one in this case, which means I need some box somewhere, okay. Okay, damn it. Oh, this is all looks fine. Usually my C++ coding skill is amazing. Sorry for means. Okay, so this contest was going so well and now okay my DFS causes a crash. I don't know I should it springs to some stack dump, but auto success yeah whatever. Kit wire, for example. This was relatively easy. Yeah. 
Interesting to engineers of my life. Rewriting to C++. So, I don't know. Maybe if I had hope of carp implement, or maybe just TFS solution pass Java without any demons. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, so I mean, it'd be fine if I actually have a bug, and this will be the same TLE. I don't think it's possible. It's only one test. Of course, it's accepted. Well, well, well. What can I say? People can still overtake me first for like eight minutes. Second, yeah, it was not very nice. Okay, let's try to submit in Java without Dinitz at all. Magically works. Okay, let's submit the Java seven just to see basically what other options I had. Submit this in Java 7 as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe somehow Java 8. 23. <laughs> 23, what can I say? 23, 11 now, oh, it's like timeout, I guess, cannot submit too many, probably the number of seconds remaining, right? yeah, exactly, okay, so let's see what, what this is all about. So far, the DFS version is passing, passing, passing. <laughs> oh, the DFS solution passes. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I had to copy paste Dinitz and it timed out. Now I just implement the DFS solution and it passes. This is cute, cute story. Could have finished much faster and <sighs> nice, very nice. Hope I don't get any two times for submitting after the last problem got accepted. Okay. Good thing is that probably this guarantees me. Qualification for the online round, yeah, third place would be more than enough. And the uh, pass is Java 7. Most likely not. It's faster, but not by much. And it's so slow. It's somehow this is limitation of suited for Java I have too much interjection maybe. Need to change everything to use arrays. Yeah, that's sad. Probably same same TLE. Yeah, no, not a lot difference. Maybe you can later ask for test case from Makota to see. Actually, if I upload them somewhere, so I can just look. 
why it being so slow on this on some graph yeah how can i make it faster yeah we'll do it later <laughs> yeah but this time limit it was set. still going for half an hour but i guess i'll probably finish my broadcast so again overall as you might or might not know this contest is part of what's something called a coder race ranking where uh, okay somehow one, one should find the page okay i guess i can go to makoto's profile on code forces and hopefully we'll show this race ranking somewhere somewhere how to apply calls on Linux okay decisions it's colder GP30, GP30. Okay. It's actually not so easy to find this page. I know I have it in my oh, this one. Yeah. This page. So yeah. So here we can see that yeah, with 60 points I get 420 and Ian's place has like 200 something so yeah. Now I think I'm mathematically qualified. Mm, yeah. yeah, I think so. Which is good. Still no wins in the season. Today was quite close actually. Yeah. I was that much closer from the time limit issue. And of course I wasted quite some time solving those problems because we yeah, actually got the ideas reasonably fast, but just yeah, implementing seconds <laughs> was one of the strange things. Yeah. Well, well, well. Anyway, uh, yeah, probably my speech is a bit of a mess today, but thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye.